For our math warm-up today, I would like you to number your paper from 1 to 5, and you are going to find fraction of a fraction. So let's refresh our memories on that. Go ahead and pause your video, and once you're finished, come back on and check to see how you did. So let's take a look to see how you did. So the first problem, one third of one half, I drew a picture, divided it in half first of all, and then I divided that half into thirds, which is what I have here on this left side, and I colored one section of that. Now we know that my answer is gonna be one part out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. But if you will recall, when we did fraction of problems previously, we were able to actually take those fractions and turn them around and just multiply. So let's look back at the problem. If we had just multiplied one third times one half, we would have gotten one sixth as our answer. Okay, let's take a look at number two. We have two thirds of one half. So once again, I took my picture, divided it in half, and then I took that half and divided it into thirds and colored in two parts for that two thirds section. And then again, that's two out of a total of six parts, which would be our answer here. But also, if we had multiplied two thirds times one half, we would have also gotten two sixths. So down here for number three, we have three fifths of five sixths. And what I did was just turn those around and multiply them to make it a little bit easier to kind of show you what I was talking about. And we got an answer of 15 thirtieths. And then for number four, we had one fourth of one fifth. So again, you can do a picture, you can use fraction circles, or you can multiply, but you should have gotten one twentieth. And for the last one, we had three fourths of one fifth. Again, I just decided to turn it around, go ahead and multiply that out. My answer was three twentieths. So how did you do? For the math message today, we're gonna to take a look at this problem. A six meter rope is cut into three equal pieces. How long is each piece? So the, notice I've got three problems here. So that was number one. Number two is a one meter rope is cut into three equal pieces. How long is each piece? And number three, a half meter rope is cut into three equal pieces how long is each piece? So I want you to complete all three of those problems and I need a number model. And I want you to be thinking about when you write out your equations, what part is the divisor? What part is the quotient? And what part is the dividend? Pause your video and once you've completed those, come on back and check to see how you did. So let's take a look. Number one, you should have written a number model of six divided by three equals two meters. So when we think about labels, right? What's our divisor? What's our quotient? What's our dividend? Quotient is going to be your answer every single time. So two meters is going to be the quotient. The divisor is what you're dividing by. So notice when we say this out loud, it's six divided by three. So your divisor is three, your dividend is six. This is another way to write that. So again, when we have it written like this, we say the number on the inside of that symbol first. So it'd be six divided by three, okay? Number two, you should have had one divided by three so again, your divisor is three, your dividend is one, your quotient, which is your answer, one third of a meter. And again, if you choose to write it in this fashion, this is what it would look like, one divided by three. And our last one, we have one half divided by three equals one sixth of a meter. And this one's a little bit trickier. We normally don't write it like this, but I went ahead and did um, today. But one half divided by three, you normally don't see a fraction inside that division symbol. 
I also drew a picture over here just to kind of remind you how we would draw that if we needed to. So again, our quotient is 1 sixth, our divisor is 3, and our dividend is 1 half for that problem. Our lesson today is fraction division, and this will be part one. The reason that we are learning about fraction division is so that we can explore strategies for dividing fractions. So you know that most likely means that there's probably more than one way to divide fractions. So we will be investigating some of that. How we are going to go about that, we're gonna use number lines, if you would like, fraction circle pieces, pictures, and the very important relationship between multiplication and division. So let's start with taking a look at a picture first of all. Our problem is three family members equally share one fifth of a pan of cornbread. How much of the pan will each person get? So the first thing that we need to do is predict whether you think that the answer is going to be greater than or less than the dividend. So remember, the dividend is what you're dividing by, okay? So go ahead and pause your video, see if you can think or draw a picture of what you think this might look like. For our first demonstration, we're going to use a picture to divide our fractions. So let's take a look at the problem. We have three family members equally sharing one-fifth of a pan of cornbread. How much of the pan will each person get? So before we actually do the problem, I want you to think about making a prediction. And your prediction needs to be whether you think that our answer or our quotient is going to be greater than or less than the dividend. Greater than or less than the dividend. So hopefully you're thinking that it's going to be less than because when we think about the dividend, the dividend is one fifth and we're thinking about splitting that up between three people so that means it's just going to get smaller and smaller. So what's our number model going to look like? Well, it should be one-fifth divided by three equals y. And then what we can do is we can draw a picture. And so let's say that we draw a rectangle and we're going to divide that up into fifths. And then we're going to shade one-fifth of that. So this is the section that we are actually dividing up for those three people. Then what we would do is we would go about dividing that into thirds. And now we have taken that one-fifth and we have divided it into thirds. But we need to figure out what our answer is going to be. So if we extend those lines and divide the whole pan of cornbread into thirds, we can then determine what our answer is going to be. So we're going to have... one fifteenth of a pan of cornbread and that's what each person would get because this would be one person two people three people and we count the total number of pieces in the entire pan so they would get one fifteenth of the pan we could then check that problem by using multiplication so we would then turn that around and say one-fifth times one-third equals one-fifteenth. So we've got one-fifteenth here, we've got one-fifteenth here, 
so we know that we did the problem correctly. All right, our next method is going to be using a number line to solve fraction division. So let's take a look at the first problem. Jerome is making banana walnut bread. The recipe calls for one third cup of walnuts. He mixes the batter and pours it into two small bread tins. If he splits the walnuts equally between the two tins, how many cups of walnuts will be in each tin? So the first thing that we want to do, of course, is think about how to set up the problem. So basically, we are taking one third and we are dividing by two. And let's say that that equals B for bread. The next thing that we would do is then go about making a number line that's going to help us figure that out. So we don't have a whole lot to put in the number line because the fraction that we're dividing is fairly small. Um, but what we're gonna do is, let's say that I put one third here, and I know that if I'm splitting that in two, I'm basically dividing that one third in half. So I'm gonna be looking right here at the number line. This is about half where that would be located. Well, half of one third happens to be one sixth. And then one third, of course, is equal to two sixths. So if we take two sixths and we break it in two, we have one sixth for each person. So our answer to this problem is one sixth um, cup of walnuts. We would then go about checking that by taking one third times one half, which equals one sixth. So there you have one sixth here, one sixth here. So we know that we got our answer correct. Next, I'd like to take a look at using fraction circles to solve uh, a similar problem. So we've got two students equally share one fourth of a stick of clay. How much of the stick will each student get? So again, we're gonna use fraction circles to try to figure this out. So grab your fraction circles or open up one of those uh, tools that you have online that have fraction circles and see if you can figure out what to do with this particular problem. Pause your video and come on back when you're ready. Okay, so let's take a look. We have the fraction circle 1 fourth here and basically we need to take that one fourth and we're gonna divide that by two. So this would be our number model with our unknown. And we know that the fraction circle one eighth will cover one fourth if we take two of those, as you can see here. So our answer to our problem would be each student would get one eighth of a stick of clay. We could check that with multiplication so that we would have one fourth times one half and that's going to give us one eighth. All right, let's summarize what we've talked about so far with this lesson. We know that using multiplication, number lines, and fraction circles can be used to check fraction division. And that's also uh, different methods that we can use to actually divide as well. So make sure you check your work. Until next time.